It's not often that a 151-page government report has me cheering and jumping up and down and punching the air in sheer elation, but today is one of those very rare days. The United States Department of Energy has released a new report titled A Critical Review of Impacts of Greenhouse Gas Emissions on the U.S. Climate. I'm going to read you some direct excerpts from this report because, honestly, this is the best thing I've read in genuinely in years. And I actually got a bit emotional finally seeing some straight up, point blank, honest to God, truth and common sense coming from a government department. It must be a cold day in hell. And for the YouTube algorithm and senses, I'm not going to add any of my own opinion or information to this report. I'm just going to quote from the report itself. Before we get to the executive summary, I just want to pause and take a moment to survey the working group behind this report, the scientists who actually authored it. I can only imagine how incredibly great it must feel for them, because each of these scientists has been deplatformed, defunded, mocked and pilloried for speaking the truth consistently for decades on the issue of climate. Dr. Judith Curry, Dr. Roy Spencer, and Dr. Ross McKintrick are three of the five that really stand out for me, no disrespect to the other two. And I'll bet that with the insanity of the last few decades, these people probably doubted that they would ever live to see the day when they could release such an honest report on a US government letterhead. Now, before I start reading, please allow me a moment to say that my name is Topher Field, and this is what I do. I bring you stories and perspective and information and data that you won't find in the mainstream media. Now, you can help this, the Topher Project, to keep going by buying me a coffee via the button at topherfield.net, and you'll find my books on government and the role of civil disobedience, as well as my multi-award-winning DVD about unrest in my home city during the COVID lockdowns, plus all my other merch, including a range of designs and in hood t-shirts and long sleeve tees, all available from goodpeoplebreakbadlaws.com. All right, let's dive into this report. And remember, I'm just quoting from the US government here. I'm going to start at the very beginning, a very good place to start, by reading the Secretary's forward. Now, the Secretary in this case is the US Energy Secretary, Chris Wright. His appointment by Donald Trump went relatively unnoticed compared to the appointments of the likes of Cash Patel and RFK Jr. But Trump has made no secret of his intention to turn the US into an energy superpower. And as we'll see as I read through this, I think he's picked the right guy for the job. Let's go. Secretary's forward, titled Energy integrity, and the power of human potential. Over my lifetime, I've had the privilege of working as an energy entrepreneur across a range of fields, nuclear, geothermal, natural gas, and more. And I now serve as Secretary of Energy under President Donald Trump. But above all, I'm a physical scientist who sees modern energy as nothing short of miraculous. It powers every aspect of modern life, drives every industry, and has made America an energy powerhouse with the ability to fuel global progress. The rise of human flourishing over the past two centuries is a story worth celebrating, yet we are told relentlessly that the very energy systems that enabled this progress now pose an existential threat. Hydrocarbon-based fuels, the argument goes, must be rapidly abandoned or else we risk planetary ruin. That view demands scrutiny. That's why I commissioned this report, to encourage a more thoughtful and science-based conversation about climate and climate change and energy. With my technical background, I reviewed reports from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the US government's assessments, and the academic literature. I've also engaged with many climate scientists, including the authors of this report. What I've found is that the media coverage often distorts the science. Many people walk away with a view of climate change that is exaggerated or incomplete. To provide clarity and balance, I asked a diverse team of independent experts to critically review the current state of climate science, with a focus on how it relates to the United States. I didn't select these authors because we always agree, far from it. In fact, they may not always agree with each other, but I chose them for their rigor, honesty, and willingness to evaluate, or to elevate, excuse me, the debate. 
I exerted no control over their conclusions. What you'll read are their words drawn from the best available data and scientific assessments. I've reviewed the report carefully and I believe it faithfully represents the state of climate science today. Still, many readers may be surprised by its conclusions, which differ in important ways from the mainstream narrative. That's a sign of how far the public conversation has drifted from the science itself. To correct course, we need open, respectful and informed debate. That's why I'm inviting public comment on this report. Honest scrutiny and scientific transparency should be at the heart of our policy making. Climate change is real and it deserves attention, but it is not the greatest threat facing humanity. That distinction belongs to global energy poverty. As someone who values data, I know that improving the human condition depends on expanding access to reliable, affordable energy. Climate change is a challenge, not a catastrophe, but misguided policies based on a fear rather than facts could truly endanger human well-being. We stand at the threshold of a new era of energy leadership. If we empower innovation rather than restrain it, America can lead the world in providing cleaner, more abundant energy, lifting billions out of poverty, strengthening our economy and improving our environment along the way. Now, first up, yeah, there's a few things in there that I don't quite agree with, but doesn't that still stir something inside of you? The clarity of it, the rightness of it, the vision that he has for improving the human condition via energy abundance? And doesn't it tell you something about our own so-called leadership here at home that a humble energy secretary in the US can stir something inside of you that no Australian Prime Minister has stirred in decades, if ever? This report is 151 pages long, and I'm not going to sit here and read it all to you. But let me tell you that it is pretty exciting. And I've put a link to it in the description of this video so that you can grab it, download it, and read it for yourself. But let me read you the executive summary. I promise you, if that forward put a smile on your face, the executive summary will make your heart sing. Executive summary. This report reviews scientific certainties and uncertainties in how anthropogenic carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gas emissions have affected or will affect the nation's climate, extreme weather events, and selected metrics of societal well-being. Those emissions are increasing the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere through a complex and variable carbon cycle, where some portion of the additional CO2 persists in the atmosphere for centuries. Elevated concentrations of CO2 directly enhance plant growth globally, globally contributing to greening the planet and increasing agricultural productivity. They also make the oceans less alkaline. Now, that is possibly detrimental to coral reefs, although the recent rebound of the Great Barrier Reef suggests otherwise. Carbon dioxide also acts as a greenhouse gas exerting a warming influence on climate and weather. Climate change predictions require scenarios of future emissions. There is evidence that scenarios widely used in the impacts literature have overstated observed and likely future emissions trends. The world's several dozen climate models offer little guidance on how much the climate responds to elevated CO2, with the average surface warming under a doubling of the CO2 concentration ranging from 1.8 degrees Celsius to 5.7 degrees Celsius. Data-driven methods yield a lower and narrower range. Global climate models generally run hot in their description of the climate over the past few decades, too much warming at the surface and too much amplification of warming in the lower and mid troposphere. The combination of overly sensitive models and implausible extreme scenarios for future emissions yields exaggerated predictions of future warming. Most extreme weather events in the US do not show long-term trends. Claims of increased frequency or intensity of hurricanes, tornadoes, floods and droughts are not supported by the US historical data. Additionally, forest management practices are often overlooked in assessing changes in wildfire activity. Global sea level has risen approximately 8 inches since 1900, but there are significant regional variations driven primarily by local land subsidence. US tide gauge measurements in aggregate show no obvious acceleration in sea level rise beyond the historical average rate. Attribution of climate change or extreme weather events to human CO2 emissions is challenged by natural climate variability. 
by data limitations and inherent model deficiencies. Moreover, solar activity's contribution to the late 20th century warming might be underestimated. Both models and experience suggest that CO2-induced warming might be less damaging economically than commonly believed, and excessively aggressive mitigation practices could prove more detrimental than beneficial. Social cost of carbon estimates which attempt to quantify the economic damage of CO2 emissions are highly sensitive to their underlying assumptions, and so provide limited independent information. U.S. policy actions are expected to have undetectably small direct impacts on the global climate, and any effects will emerge only with long delays. That's the executive summary for this new report from the U.S. Department of Energy titled A Critical Review of Impacts of Greenhouse Gas Emissions on the U.S. Climate. And doesn't it just kind of make your heart sing? You can download it from the link in the description, but let me show you one more thing, just so you can see that they really do follow through on the promises that they made in the executive summary. Section two is where they dive into the actual science of CO2 under the heading direct impacts of CO2 on the environment. And the very first thing they talk about, the first thing is global greening and the fact that the increase in atmospheric CO2 over the last few decades has led directly to the planet getting greener thanks to the effect of CO2 fertilization. And of course, as you would expect, they provide all the graphs and illustrations as they go through the effects of CO2 on plants, on water consumption, ocean, ocean pH levels, the Great Barrier Reef, and more. And of course, they provide all their references. So you can download this report, read it, and dive as deep as you like through those references into this rabbit hole as far as you want to go. It's all there for you. Now, all of what you just saw is just the first 10 pages of the actual report. There's 130 odd more pages of data following that. And it's all at least that good or better. Honestly, this is the most encouraging thing I've read in years. Because for 16 years, I've been one of the people trying to cut through the fear mongering and the BS. I traveled to the US and to Canada 12 years ago for a project called the 50 to 1 Project, and I had the unspeakable pleasure of interviewing Professor Fred Singer before his passing, an absolute gentleman of a man and a true bucket list moment for me. Now, many of the people appointed by the Energy Secretary onto this working group are also on my bucket list to interview just by the way. So Dr. Curry, Dr. McKintrick, Dr. Spencer, call me. And all that time, all the 16 years that I've been doing this, I've been waiting since before I created that 50 to 1 project more than a decade ago. I've been waiting to see some honesty from a major world government to just for them to come out and tell us the truth about CO2. Well, courtesy of Donald J. Trump, that day has finally come. Now, sadly, you're not going to see this report being mentioned in the mainstream media, nor will our government or even our opposition be talking about it anytime soon, because they all seem determined to keep the climate grift going, and are too cowardly, with a few notable exceptions, it must be said. They are mostly too cowardly to just stand up and speak the scientific facts of the matter. There's a lot more that I could say, but I'm going to leave it there for now. Do yourself a favor, click the link in this video's description to download and read the full report for yourself. It'll put a smile on your face and a warm glow in your heart. My name's Topher Field. This is the Topher Project. And well, this is what I do. I bring you stories that no one else will and information that helps you to cut through the crap and see what's actually going on in the world around you. Now, I'm 100% viewer supported. I have no sponsors, no advertisers, and I can't rely on YouTube ad revenue because they regularly demonetize my videos, especially the ones about climate change. So if you didn't already know about this particular bombshell report from the US Department of Energy and how it completely flips the script on the accepted wisdom around climate change, and if you reckon maybe you would never have heard of it or had the chance to read it if it weren't for me and the Topher Project, then please help me to keep the Topher Project going by buying me a coffee via the button at topherfield.net and by checking out all my best-selling books about government, power, human rights and civil disobedience, plus my multi-award-winning DVD documentary, Battleground Melbourne, plus all of my merch in a range of different funky and fun designs at goodpeoplebreakbadlaws.com. And every purchase helps me to keep bringing you more stories like this one. Thank you so much for watching to the end. The algorithm loves you, and so do I. I hope this video has put a smile on your face. Please like, comment what you think about all of this and what you think might happen next. 
please subscribe. I'm nearly at 100,000 subscribers and yeah, I know it's just a number, but hey, it'll be a pretty cool little milestone in my journey when I get there. So it'd be cool if you'd help me out by subscribing. But most importantly of all and as always, think free.